Hi everypony, Winked T Spears here and welcome back to the long overdue chapter of this recurring story that has been here since nearly the foundation of my channel. Now probably 80% of you have already skipped to the start of the story, but for those that still remain, I want to take a little moment to just talk about a few things and make a few things clear because I realise that sometimes in my intros I'm not very specific or open when it comes to talking about certain subjects because I like to mainly keep things to the point. And that can be for a number of reasons. I can be in a rush, I can be so excited to get the story done, I just completely forget everything else. A, a number of variables go into the length of my intro sometimes and how personal I want to be at the time of recording them because, you know, outside influences, while I'm in a better position, they can influence how I am sometimes. and. And it's that kind of outside influence that I want to bring to everyone's attention when it comes to this particular story. Now, this chapter has been out for quite a while now, and I would have gotten on it and done this a lot sooner had it not been for a few incidents that happened in my personal life and, of course, on YouTube itself. The incidents that happened in my personal life were obviously out of my control and it's nobody's fault but the people who started them. I'm not going into any more detail, but for those in the comments, this is this is particularly to those in the comments. Now, I love it when all of you comment on my videos, whether you're asking for new stories to be read, directing me to new stories that have been uploaded that I want to check out, and about three or four of them that I've checked out have been amazing, and two of them are the most popular readings that I've ever done on my channel. I'm so grateful that you guys constantly trawl through film fiction, finding great stories and recommending them to the readers, because half the time people spend a lot of time reading stories that have been done to death or that are just for popularity but I'm glad that you guys find unique stories to put up and that's kind of what I want to talk about because requesting stories is absolutely fine whether you want to request a, a specific one through my patreon or just putting it in the comments I'm absolutely fine with that I love input from you guys but there's a point to where it becomes incessant and I'm sure some of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to this particular story. I made a little uh, passing comment a few months ago about how I'd like to thank the 8,000 or so people that reminded me that a new chapter was up. I wasn't joking. Every time a new chapter to this story is uploaded, I am absolutely flooded with comments, requests, alerts, and no matter how many times I say them in replies to you guys, in my videos, or in the comments in general, every time a new chapter of Cuddling is the Best Remedy is uploaded and someone lets me know, I do tell them. I'm not sure if this is common knowledge or not, but I am in contact with the author. I know exactly what they're doing, I know when they're writing, I know when they finished it, I know when they're proofreading it, and I know when it's uploaded. I am more in the loop than most, and I'm not saying that as arrogance, I'm saying that I know that it's up, and I, and I thank you guys for bringing it to my attention, but I do know. And here's the other side of it. Requesting something once is fine, but... For those who don't look at the comments, for those who just leave a comment and then just go, in the past it has become quite annoying because I get the same requests every single time I upload a new video and with my last video it was literally the equivalent to someone putting first or second in the comments. Now, I do have a few opinions on that, but today is not the time and place to be talking about that. What I do want to talk about is people saying, read more cuddling is the best remedy, and it's the first comment on a new video I've made. It's not a, it's not about what I've done in that video, it's just about that story. And from my point of view, I do find that kind of a little bit disrespectful, because you guys know how attentive I am to when it comes to getting readings done, and I ne and unless I say otherwise, I usually never ever stop reading something without letting you guys know first. If I wanted to quit reading this, I would have told you guys completely straight away. I keep nothing from you when it comes to the work I do, but I have to draw the line somewhere, and this is where I draw the line, because requesting something incessantly over and over and over again, it doesn't speed up the process, it in fact slows it down, exponentially so, in a case like this, because I'm flooded with comments all the time, and now, some would say, oh, just get it, get it up and get it done, but I lose my enthusiasm, and there have been occasions where I've read stories with no enthusiasm, and they either don't do well, or people know something's wrong. 
And that is not what I want to bring across, particularly when it comes to stories as old as this one. This story is nearly as old as my channel. It does mean a lot to me, but I do have to draw the line somewhere when it comes to what I want to create, because I have to be in the mood to create certain stories. And if I'm not in that mindset, it's not going to be good. It's going to be either half-baked, or I'm not going to be happy with it, or I may just scrap it entirely, and that's not what I want. I want to enjoy what I do. I'm going to end it there. And the moral of this is, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. And in this case, that's exactly what happened. Requesting something over and over again, whether you just want to let me know or you just want to help, I'm fine with that. But please take some time to look at the comments or look at what I might have said in one of my videos as to whether or not I'm aware that there's a new chapter. And remember, I am in contact with the author. So there's a high likelihood that I do know. So requesting things is fine, but doing it over and over again is not going to expedite the process, it's going to make it slower. And then this is in no way a jab to you guys. You know how grateful I am that you guys keep watching my videos. So I'm not angry at any of you guys, it's just a reminder for the future, that's all. So this intro has gone on about as long as the story, so <laughs> let's get to it. Chapter 10. A Late Night Picnic Come on, is the food ready yet? Almost, Dash. You are currently in the kitchen, making the last of the sandwiches for your moonlight picnic out in Ponyville Park. You made simple daffodil and daisy sandwiches for Dash. You went a little overboard with yours. Your sandwiches are a little Greek, to say the least. Okay, are you done now? Rainbow asks impatiently. You chuckle and shake your head. Rainbow, in order to achieve perfection with a sandwich, you must take your time. Treat it right. She gives you a blank stare. You're kidding, right? All you can do is laugh and ruffle her mane. She pouts and snorts. I'm almost done, Dash. Just give me a few more seconds. You grab the bread and slice it in half. You lay a layer of spinach evenly on the bread. Next, you lay pickled red onions in an even layer. You grab the mint and lay them down on top of the onions. The finishing touch, feta cheese. You top your sandwich off with the top of your bread and slice diagonally. You open up the sandwich and show Dash. This is what happens when you take your time. You point to the layers. She rolls her eyes but smiles. You place the sandwiches in the basket and grab a blanket and coat. You ready to go? You ask. I've only been ready for the past ten minutes. You chuckle and open the door. Ladies first. Rainbow walks out and stretches a bit. You close the door and walk up beside her. She looks up at you and smiles. You begin to walk with her. She leans against you as you do. The two of you don't talk, only listening to the sound of the wind as you walk. Eventually you make it to Ponyville Park. You go to the top of a hill and lay out the blanket. Rainbow grabs a few large stones to use as a weight for the blanket. You smile and open up the basket. Rainbow looks expectantly at you. You reach in and pull out her food. Thanks! She immediately unwraps it and takes a bite. She smiles. It's perfect. You smile and give her a hug. Rainbow leans into you, resting her head against your chest. You give her forehead a little kiss and break the hug. You reach into the basket and pull out your sandwich. You look at it and smile, admiring your work, the layers of the sandwich easily visible. Rainbow looks at you and quirks an eyebrow. Aren't you going to eat? I don't think I can. Uh, why? Because it's the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. It's almost hypnotizing. Rainbow's right eye twitches and a scowl crosses her face. Uh, what? You immediately burst out laughing. Rainbow looks at you with a frown. <laughs> oh, you should have seen the look on your face. She gives your left arm a sharp punch. Ouch! That actually hurt. Well, that's what you get. Saying a sandwich is more than be- Saying a sandwich is more beautiful than me? Come on. There's no way that's true. Of course it's not true. She giggles and smiles at you before putting down her sandwich and scooting closer to you. Rainbow wraps her hooves around your neck, pulling you into a tight embrace. She sighs happily, whispering into your ear. I love you. I love you too, Rainbow. 
you whisper back. She pulls back and kisses you. The soft fur on her lips tickles. You run your fingers through her mane, making her shiver with delight. She presses her lips more firmly against yours, deepening the kiss. She softly moans and her tail swishes. She breaks the kiss and blushes deeply. Rainbow, you are cut off by the mare tackling you onto your back. She looks down at you, giving you the most loving smile you have ever seen. You are completely entranced by this mare. As you look up at her, the moon shines brightly behind her, making her glow and appear almost like a goddess. Your mouth goes dry and you struggle to find the words to tell her how beautiful she is right now. Rainbow giggles and lays on top of you. She peppers your face with several kisses. So, how does that sandwich compare to me? It has nothing on you. She giggles and kisses you deeply. You press your lips back into hers. Her wings wrap around you. You are in heaven. The mare that you love is simply showering you with her affections. You break the kiss and smile. You are the most beautiful mare in Equestria. She blushes and smiles, before leaning her head down onto yours once more to give you a quick kiss. Hey, Rainbow? Yeah? Can I please eat my sandwich now? She giggles and shakes her head. Just hold me for a little while. Then you can eat your sandwich. You chuckle and wrap your arms around her. You pull her close and turn on your side. You kiss her forehead and let her snuggle right up to you. You look over at the basket and give a little chuckle. You weren't even that hungry. You were just doing this for Dash. Rainbow sighs and looks up at you. You know, you make me feel even more beautiful than the princesses. Rainbow says softly. I didn't know that. She kisses your cheek. Well, now you do. You chuckle and pull her even closer. I honestly think you are more beautiful than the princesses. Celestia doesn't even hold a candle to you. How about Princess Luna? Nope. Rainbow giggles and kisses your lips once more. You never get tired of that. You break the kiss and get up and stretch. Rainbow does the same. It's getting late. Let's pack up and go home, Rainbow. She giggles and nods. You fold the blanket and put it in the basket along with your untouched sandwich. On the bright side, you have lunch for tomorrow. The walk home was spent in silence once again, the two of you just enjoying the other's presence. Having the most important mare in the world at your side is what you live for. You only live for Rainbow Dash. And there we have it, everypony. I hope you all enjoyed this as short as it was. I'm hoping this story does come to a climax soon. It's building up to something, but I don't know what yet. Let's hope we get that answer in the next chapter or so. Anyway, I'll see you next time, everypony.